Hi, and welcome to the Migro YouTube channel. My name is Shane, and I'm the founder of Migro. Today, I'd like to help answer the question, how much light do my plants need? When we're talking about lighting for plants, we need to be talking about the unit of measurement, par. Not lumens or lux, which are units of measurement of how we perceive light in terms of brightness. Par, or photosynthetic reactive radiation, is a measurement of the useful light for plants. And we, we measure par, of our photosynthetically active radiation using a quantum sensor. In this case, I have a Apogee SQ500, which is a very accurate quantum sensor. And we're going to use this to measure power across a grow area. When we measure power across a grow area, we don't just measure the light in the center. So you can see here the sensor is positioned directly underneath the light and we're getting a, an output here on our, our visual display in hundreds of par of 250. And you can see as I move the sensor over, the par level here reduces to only 60 par at the side of the grow area. So when we're assessing a grow area, we measure the par level right across our grow area. So we've divided it up into a grid we're going to measure in each of the squares on the grid in order to assess how much light is going to be reaching our plants. We're going to put plants into each of these grow bays. We have three lined up and we have the grow lights hung at different heights. By hanging the grow lights at different heights we're going to achieve different power levels in each of the different grow bays. Where the light is hung lowest, it's going to be the highest power level, but also it's going to be quite concentrated in the center. And we, when we have the light positioned higher from our grow area, we're going to have a better spread of light, but the total amount of power reaching the grow area is going to be less because it's lost, it's been bounced off the side and it's illuminating the, the side walls and uh, not reaching the plant area. So the height that we're measuring at, that we have this uh, grid, is positioned about 15 centimeters or six inches above the top of the pot. And this is just to give us a, a common plane um, or measurement surface, which will represent the plant canopy when we put the plants into the pots and do our comparison grow. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the power levels across the grids in each of the grow areas and we're going to look at those levels uh, before we put the plants in and do our, our, our grow test. So let's measure the uh, power levels in each of these areas and then look at the results. So the quantum sensor is being positioned in each square in the grid and the measurement of photosynthetic photon flux density is being taken in each square. This is the amount of power light that's impacting that particular area. When we take the overall simulated plant canopy, we can then overlay the individual measurements in each square on the grid. And from these measurements, we can produce a power map, which shows the gradient of power intensity across the grow area. And we're also able to calculate the total level of power uh, for each grow area. So we'll show each of the power levels now side by side. The lowest one at 25 centimeters has an average power of 634, but a very high maximum at 2130, which is a significant hotspot. The middle hanging height at 45 centimeters, the average power is 10% reduced at 572, but a much better max power at 1060. At the higher hanging height, the average power is very significantly reduced but it's a much uh, more even coverage with reduced hotspots. Really the optimum hanging height here is the center one because we've achieved a trade-off between having the maximum amount of power for the growing area and having a high level in the center but not such a high level that it's going to um, cause damage to the plants. So we're expecting to get the best productivity and growth, the healthiest growth in the center bay. 
So here we have each of the grow bays planted. In each bay there is a tomato plant in the rear and bedding plants to the front. The soil, pot sizes, water regime, uh, temperature, environment, etc. all the same for each one. The only difference being the hanging height. So the um, tomato plants, they're a totem variety. They've all got a similar amount of early fruit on them. On the front we have bedding plants which should provide very quick growth and should show us some uh, flowering characteristics and some stretching under low light and uh, good dense growth under high levels of light. So let's get these guys going under the time lapse grow. We're going to run it for four weeks and see what comes out on the other end. So you've seen in the time-lapse grow over the four-week period, there's quite a lot of growth in both the tomato plants and the bedding plants. If we look where the light level was least, i.e. The, the, the light was hung at the highest level, there's quite a bit of stretching here has occurred on the tomato plants, uh, upreaching for the light. So not enough light for that, f for the tomato plant and also on the bedding plant, a huge amount of stretching. It's, reaching out way outside the pot off looking for light. In the center one, the light level for the tomato plant was, was probably optimum in that it gave very good growth, nice healthy growth, whereas the bedding plant was still a bit further from the light and a bit too far and stretched quite considerably. On the lowest level, height level for the light, there was way too much light for the tomato plant, so it has burnt and been damaged by too much light intensity where it's got within sort of six inches of the bulb. However, the bedding plant has done very well and it's very bushy and dense growth with little stretching and lots of flowers. So now we can have a look at the tomato plants and see how they did in the grow test. On the left is the plant that was under the light at the high level. So got the, the least amount of light and you can see the stretching. I think it's evident right here. You can see the, the tall distances between the, the nodes on the growth. And um, it's a fairly light growth on the top. The yield itself is minimal. Three ripe and uh, three unripe coming up behind it but very little else. Then we can see the middle one, which was at probably the optimum height, the middle level height. And that's got good dense growth, very healthy, no sign of any damage on top, and an excellent yield. Uh, lots of tomatoes ripening and loads coming on behind, just showing how healthy the plant is. And the last one was our low level plant. And unfortunately, this got a little bit of burning. It also stretched up behind the light. But the yield was good. It just didn't have the comparable um, amount of new tomatoes coming up behind. So now we have the results for the bedding plants. You can see from the left hand side was the higher hanging height or the least amount of light. And we can see over on this side, we had a lot of reach. Uh, coming from the plant. Still pretty healthy growth on top, um, but not as, as many flowers, as many blooms as in the center one, which again was medium height, had quite a lot of stretch uh, over the edge, but also very thick growth on top. And on the right hand side, we had the bedding plants that were closest to the light. And you can see here that they grew up Nice and bushy, nice and thick, and lots and lots of flowers. So in short, when we've got the light far away or low levels of light, 
we get stretch. And when the light intensity is high, i.e. the light is close to the plants, we get bush dense growth. So it's very interesting to see the outcome from the experiment where we've had three different grow setups. The only difference being between each of them being the hanging height of the grow light and the resultant power levels across the canopy of the grow. Uh, in the difference between each hanging height was only 10 centimeters or four inches. So you can see that the sensitivity of hanging height is quite high and you can have dramatically different outcomes in the health of your growth and the yield from your growth depending on the accuracy and the quality of your lighting setup. So too little power light we've seen results in stretching and low levels of productivity. Too high levels of power and, and, and low hanging height results in, in high intensity of power hotspots in the center which will damage your plants. And the adjustment to find that optimum level is very fine. Within, as I said, uh, 10 centimeters, you can vary from a good outcome to a bad outcome. The setup we had initially was done using our, our quantum sensor, our Apogee SQ500. This really is the best way to understand what the best hanging height is and to manage the trade-off between hanging low and getting the most power and hanging high enough so that the hotspots are reduced and the power is spread as evenly as possible across your grow area. So I hope this helps. If you have any questions, please let us know and uh, please subscribe. Take care.